Hi, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how the advanced settings on Keep Connect are configured and, and what all they do. So these are the basic settings where you enter your SSID and password. Keep in mind that the default settings are good enough for most users. If you don't have a lot of network knowledge and you know, you're not trying to do anything fancy or change too much, you might not need to go into the advanced settings at all. One thing that is in there that, that many users would like to use is the periodic resets or the scheduled resets. So we'll talk about those a little bit more once we get there. Notification mode, you can choose you know, no notifications. If you choose email, you can enter your email and get email notifications from your Keep Connect, or you can enter your phone number and you can get text messages. I think the instructions here are pretty straightforward. 10 digit phone number, um, here's your country code. So now we'll dive into the advanced settings where the other basic setup video did not really cover much. You can see the operating mode master or follower. A master device has, you know, it does all of the network monitoring. It reaches out and does the internet checks and a follower device just connects to the master and maybe you plug your modem into the follower keep connect and the master will send a reset signal out to one or more followers once it has determined that it a reset is needed or reboot power cycle so the connection monitor mode you'll see that when you select follower a lot of these other settings may go get grayed out Once you set it back to master, you'll see the connection monitor mode. Let's start with the simplest. Only monitor using ping. Keep Connect will just send ping packets to these primary and backup test domains. It will send a ping, and if the ping makes it to those test domains and back, then the connection is deemed to be successful and nothing else is needed. The next step up is requiring a full HTTPS exchange. HTTPS, for those that aren't familiar, is a protocol for viewing web pages. It's much of the way that a human interacts with the internet. You know, there may be some cases where a ping will work fine, but still our experience of the internet it does not work. You know, we've seen it many times with certain cellular providers the internet may still be intact but they throttle on the TCP layer so basically requiring full HTTPS success just means that keep connect has to be able to make an HTTPS request to the primary domain or the backup test domain down here if you switch over now now in some cases a successful HTTPS response may be able to be fooled by a faulty network in that case you can select the HTTPS round trip that makes HTTPS requests all the way back to our keep connect servers which are hosted on our architecture and so you can see the primary and backup are now grayed out and kind of the purpose there is our servers have an embedded success token it's called KC success and that token will be embedded in the HTTPS response and that will mean that the internet traffic actually made it all the way from your keep connect to our servers and back there may be some instances where maybe your router your local router might be smart enough to know that the internet is down and it might respond back with a redirected HTTPS success or er, or a successful HTTPS reply if you're using this mode and and that successful response back from your router it might be a successful web page that's redirected and it returns and says thanks for trying but your internet is down and that can full keep connect in some cases and there could be other sort of maybe it's not the best word but man in the middle type redirects that look to be successful however the internet is still down so keep connect round trip just guarantees that the packet goes all the way to our servers and all the way back to your keep connect it's the most secure way to be sure that your internet is working the ignore dns failures if ping 8888 works is basically just that it ignores um if if it can't reach these test domains but it can still ping the this 8.8.8.8 is a google dns server and it's just known to be a highly available server on the internet so you can always check this to if if a lookup fails for a dns lookup on the primary or backup domain but the ping still works don't perform a power cycle you may have sometimes the networks will fail you know maybe you have a bad dns server occasionally and you want to avoid power cycling when it's simply a dns server issue if you'd like to know more about distinguishing 
between the different reset reasons like this, just drop us an email and we'll be glad to chime in and, and maybe help you fine tune anything past this point. Loss of Wi-Fi reset mode. This one is, is kind of in case Keep Connect loses Wi-Fi connection to your, your local router. What do you want it to do? Do you want it to actually power cycle? You know, there could be cases if you've got a noisy network in the area where Keep Connect gets disconnected and maybe the problem is not actually the router, it's just a noisy network, too many devices, so, something along those lines. So the default behavior is reboot Keep Connect without power cycling the connected router, just reboot Keep Connect and try again and see if everything goes back to normal. The next thing to do is just maybe if, if Keep Connect drops out on the Wi-Fi, just power cycle the whole system and get it all back. That's what regular resets is. And then if you find that you've got a lot of Wi-Fi noise on your system and sometimes it just, some devices are healthy on the internet and you're okay with that in your situation, you can block resetting on Wi-Fi and just have Keep Connect await reconnecting to the Wi-Fi before it starts repeating its monitoring. Please note that Wi-Fi health and internet health are different things. Wi-Fi is the local area network within your home or business and internet connection is the connection through the internet service provider back out to the rest of the world. This setting only affects Wi-Fi dropouts and loss of communication between Keep Connect and the router and it is, is does not have anything to do with the actual underlying health of the internet. So now let's talk a little bit about the timing settings of Keep Connect. Here is a graphic showing how Keep Connect moves through the cycle. You can see at the beginning there's the power on delay. Basically, this is how long after being powered up Keep Connect waits before passing power through to the onboard receptacle. By default, this is only zero seconds, so the receptacle gets power almost immediately after power is applied to Keep Connect from the wall. You might want to make it a greater than zero second power on delay if you have followers or other, other Keep Connects in your home that you might like to power up first or in some of them delay. Let's say that you have a power outage at your house and you want some things to come on before others. This is part of the process with the master and follower configuration. The power on delay just plays the part of waiting an amount of time after the power is restored to the house or Keep Connect is plugged in before powering on the connected device. For instance, if you had your router and your modem both on a Keep Connect, you could put the router to have a 30 second power on delay setting. In this case, when the home loses power and power is restored, the modem will come on first and the router would be powered on 30 seconds after power was put to the Keep Connects. After that, Keep Connect will move into a power up cycle. It will blink yellow for three minutes by default. This is to allow the router and the modem to come back online and the system to stabilize before Keep Connect reconnects to the Wi Fi and restarts the monitoring process. Next, it will move into monitoring the connection. This is actually checking the primary domain. It will do this every five minutes by default. If the primary domain is found to be not healthy, it will wait the backup check amount of time, which is one minute by default, and then move straight into the perform reset, or also known as the power cycle sequence. It will kill power to the onboard receptacle for 30 seconds, and then Keep Connect will actually at that point reboot itself and come back online from the beginning like normal. Here are the timing settings. Again, it's five minutes that it performs the actual test. Every five minutes it performs the test. If the primary domain check fails, it waits one minute and then it checks the backup domain to see if that one's healthy. If that one also fails, Keep Connect will then move to actually power cycle the connected devices. By default, that's 30 seconds. Once it reboots itself, it will come back on and wait three minutes before trying to reconnect any Wi-Fi to allow things to stabilize. The power on delay is how long after Keep Connect receives power from the wall socket before it passes the power through to the connected device. The maximum number of continuous resets, this is all about if, let's say that your internet is lost to your home or business for an extended period of time. You don't want Keep Connect to just continuously power cycle your router or modem. You'd rather it do it a few times and then fall back to a less frequent window. By default, it will try three times back to back to back. And if it is still not successful in restoring internet connection, it will then fall back to the sustained outage retry window, 
which is every four hours by default. Every four hours, it will try the power cycle again and continue to do it every four hours until it sees a healthy internet return. Once it sees healthy internet return, the continuous reset counter is reset to zero. And if it loses connection again, it will start over from zero towards the maximum continuous reset setting. The next topic here is the auto reset interval. That moves us into the auto reset interval. This is the scheduled periodic power cycle. By default, it is off by setting this period to zero. To enable it, put a non-zero value. Let's say we want keep connect to power cycle once a day. At 6 a.m., uh, set your time zone, your hour of day, and if you want to use daylight savings time or not. One thing to note is that this interval in days is measured from the last power cycle event. So if Keep Connect actually detected an internet health issue and power cycled at 5 a.m., it will not do it again at 6 a.m. It will do it again one day later at 6 a.m. So for instance, if you had it in here every, at every seven days, and let's say on the sixth day, Keep Connect performs a power cycle on its own. It will not then do the auto reset on the next day. The seven day counter will start over and an auto reset will occur seven days from then. Let's move on now to the miscellaneous settings. Notice that there is an option to enable a static IP. If you, if you know how and you have a reason, you can enter a static IP address that Keep Connect will always have so it will not be automatically assigned one by your router. Instead, you can dictate what that IP address is. The 802.11 wireless mode by default is B slash G slash N, and it will use the highest of the three that it can, which is N in this case. If you're finding that you're having issues on your network, you can fall back and try it with a maximum of a, of a 802.11g mode. This sometimes helps in cases where you may see Keep Connect being dropped off more often. Maybe more devices are operating on the end mode and um, this is just known to sometimes help. You can also do it at, only on up to B mode. We recommend leaving it at the default, but if you're again, if you're having Wi-Fi dropouts, you can change it to a maximum of G mode. And you can also reduce the wireless transmit power. This has been found to help since Keep Connect is often very close to the router. Sometimes if there's already a lot of noise, the transmit power can further aggravate that problem. And if you're, again, seeing lots of Wi-Fi dropouts, you can reduce the wireless transmit power of Keep Connect, and it has indeed been found helpful in cases of congested networks to further stabilize the Wi-Fi connection. Finally, the last item here is renaming Keep Connect's SSID. The SSID is the name that Keep Connect broadcasts when you want to connect to its wireless access point. One use case for changing this name would be if you have lots of masters and followers on your at your site and you might would like to distinguish between them, you can assign them each a custom SSID. After that, just note that there is a button here for settings help if you need further help. And if you'd like any further clarity, feel free to just email us at support at johnson-creative.com and we'll be happy to help you from there. Thank you.